Молодий козак, молодий козак, полковничка просить. Пусти мене, полковнику, із війська до дому. Боже, скучила, Боже, змучилась дівчина за мною. Soviet Union horror film that came out in 1967. So V is a film that I watched and am now currently reviewing because it's a $50 patron request from a new patron that goes by the name of Josh Soto. I obviously highly appreciate his support along with everybody on the channel but especially him because he just gave me $50 and he requested this film and this is a film that I've never heard of until he requested it and when I looked into it and when he described what it was, I was really fascinated and I was really excited to experience this film for myself and does it cut right to the chase? I liked it quite a bit. I actually think this film is kind of great in its own way. Um, as I said, this is a Soviet Union film, but it's actually, if you want to get technical, a Ukrainian film that was written by a Ukrainian author that goes by the name of Nikolai Gogol, I think is how you pronounce it. And this film is obviously an adaptation of one of his stories. And what makes this film quite interesting, even beyond that fact, is that this film is the first Soviet Union horror film that was ever produced. Um, y'all can fact check me on that if you'd like. I, I could be wrong, but that's just what I've read up on it. And there's a few reasons as to why that is, in terms of explaining why it took quite a long time for the Soviet Union to release a horror film. Uh, one of them has to do with the fact that the government basically controls filmmaking. Essentially, nobody was allowed to produce a film and put it out there unless the government produced and signed off on it. And this is obviously because the Soviet Union government recognized film as the manipulative art device that it is as a way to kind of establish and promote the societal values that they wanted to promote. And I guess perhaps they just didn't see horror as the best avenue to do that, which if that's the case, I don't really agree. But the other reason why this film was finally made was because of the fact that Nikolai was a pretty well-respected author, and that's how the government basically agreed to make this film. But what we get in V is... A film that has, first of all, some really interesting visual approaches to it, but we'll get more into that later. But it's a film that's also kind of a cautionary tale that I actually think is a bit interpretive in its own way. But even on top of that, this is kind of just a fun and funny horror film. Um, this film, I think in a lot of ways, was intentionally comedic. There's perhaps some things that weren't intentionally comedic that I kind of found funny. But for the most part, I think there's actually some well-incorporated aspects of kind of silly, dark comedy in this film. That, for the most part, really worked for me. But as I mentioned earlier, like, even beyond that, um, the visual appeal and the kind of visual effects that are used in this film are kind of interesting because what I had heard about this film before going into it is that... Um, it was just kind of a marvel in the use of practical effects. So when I was watching this film, I was kind of waiting to see what that was all about. But instead, for the vast majority of the film, we get a lot of use of like green screen backdrop. And the thing about it is that it's really obviously green screen backdrop when you're watching it. Like it's incredibly apparent because it's a film that came out in 1967. But I still found it beautifully done in different ways. Earlier in the film, we get the scene where the witch is introduced. Yes, I forgot to mention, this film is essentially a horror film that centers around a witch that gets revenge. But we get the scene where the witch is riding on the shoulders of the main character as they're flying over the land. And even though when you're watching that scene, it's clearly a green screen backdrop, it was still like 
an incredibly soothing and comfortable scene to watch. And something about the backdrop throughout his entire film, I feel like adds to its charm because it's still visually appealing in a way. And even the score during that scene, I feel like captures the moment incredibly well, even though I won't really spoil anything, but it does, it does kind of take a dark turn soon after that. But yeah, going back to the point where I mentioned I was expecting the more practical effects aspect to this film. Um, we, it's like this film was saving all of that practical effect energy until the final, like, ten minutes of the film. Technically, final five minutes, it feels like. But in the final five minutes, we get just this explosion of practical effects magic. And it actually gets pretty intense. Uh, I'll actually say the last five minutes of this film are pretty anxiety-inducing. And even though there's an element of it that's quite comical, it's still a really effective and intense scene. And yes, I can see why people really praise the practical effects in this film, especially for what happens in the last five minutes or so, because it is really well done. And especially for a film that came out in 1967, um... It's really convincing the way they put all of these monsters and demons together. It's all very well realized. And even in those final five minutes, they still utilize that green screen backdrop in a way that was like really trippy and also, again, quite anxiety inducing and visually appealing all at the same time. And again, like I have to praise this film for being able to achieve this type of visual appeal uh, for what it was going for during its time, and even now, somehow, it still strikes me visually. So, that's a huge compliment to this film. I don't know if a lot of people are going to agree with that. I can see a lot of people being taken out by the types of visuals that this film offers. But for me, I think it worked quite well still. And going back to something that I mentioned earlier, was the fact that I said that this film is quite interpretive in certain ways. And what I meant by that was, it's really two different things. One is that... There are certain scenes in this film that I can see be interpreted as purely metaphorical. But also in general, I can see the themes in this film uh, being interpreted in different ways. Because I can easily see this film being interpreted as a feminist piece of filmmaking. Because this is a film that doesn't really depict men in the brightest light. A lot of the men in this film are basically represented as these dumb, irresponsible drunks and are people that are easily outsmarted by a female. And I think that's a really interesting aspect to this film because, again, as I mentioned, film during the Soviet Union era were used as the manipulative device that they are to promote the values that they wanted for their society. And it makes you think, like, what exactly were they trying to promote and express with this film? I mean, in terms of what I kind of interpreted of what this film was trying to express, um, was that there's this kind of, there's a kind of condemnation of sexuality in a way. And there's also some anti-religious, I don't even want to call them undertones, they're kind of overtones. But those are just some things that are kind of easy to pick up on when you're watching it. But for those who have seen it, I would love to hear what you really interpreted as the goals of this film in terms of what they wanted to express. And I also think this film is the perfect length for the material um, because it is an hour and 17 minutes, which is pretty short for a full-length film, but it's a really simple and easy and honestly kind of repetitive premise. It does kind of get to a point in like this near the end of the second act into the third act where you're just like, all right, like we get where this is going um, we know where this is heading. We pretty much know what the conclusion of this film is going to be. So it's definitely not the most unpredictable movie. And it doesn't really keep you on your toes on what you think is going to happen. But uh, overall, I still think that this film is quite impressive. And it's just a really fun film. Like I can see myself re-watching this film many times throughout my life. So I'm going to give V a soft 8 out of 10. <laughs> For those of you out there that have seen this film, I would love to hear any type of opinion or insight that you have on this film in the comment section. That's all I got to say about V. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about the film, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.